Welcome to the Autograph University Masterclass. I'm Matt Raymond. If you're watching this, you may be thinking, Matt, don't you usually host a show from a bright red room with a Kevin Durant autograph jersey over your shoulder? Well, here's the deal. My wife and I are selling our place, and my buddy, who's our realtor, came in and said, Matt, you got to take these autographs down, put them in a storage unit, paint this a neutral color so it doesn't freak people out if they don't love bright red. So... That's the game you have to play if you want to try to sell your place. So I'm not actually broadcasting from a prison cell. It just kind of looks that way. Um, anyway, awesome show today. We have Garrett Berthew. He's a grapher down in Connecticut. He's a college student, and he's going to talk about how to graph on a college student's budget. Uh, we can all identify with having to graph on a budget and what investments that we choose to make. So a lot of great tips. He has some great stories he's going to share. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Autograph University Masterclass. I'm Matt Raymond. Great guest on the show today. He is a college student, a grapher down in Connecticut, and he actually got in touch with me and said, Hey Matt, I have knowledge to drop. Let's do it. So we're doing it. Garrett Berthium, thanks for coming on the Masterclass. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. So for those folks that don't know you, um, I know I've followed some of your stuff on the message boards. Um, and we've connected through like social email stuff like that but for people who you're brand you know brand new to you tell us a little bit about you know kind of your background with collecting what you like to collect and and how you got into the whole autograph hobby yeah definitely um basically I started when I was really young my dad would always bring me to baseball games quite a few every year and we uh, normally we would go to Norwich which was a double a team at the time and so I mean, I didn't really know what I was doing at all back then, so I would get like uh, 20 guys on a ball with Sharpie, the ball that was used in like batting practice sure, sure, and yeah. stuff. But I guess that kind of got me really into like talking to players, interacting with them. And after that, like as I grew up, I guess, um, it was always baseball. I never did anything except for uh, baseball until I got into college. And then I started uh, doing college basketball, especially Big East, since... Um, uh, UConn's really close to where I go to school. Sure. So uh, I've been doing uh, baseball, basketball, and I've also gotten into uh, some like celebrities, some uh, d different events that come around the schools around here. So talk about, uh, you talked about UConn being right by there, but like, what is the scene like in your region? You know, the readers and viewers of the Mass Cross are always interested in kind of getting that flavor from, you know, different areas of the country. Um, you know, I'm up here in Boston and have that perspective. But down in Connecticut, I mean, we think, you know, you have, you have Hartford, you have the Yukon stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, where, where are there opportunities for graphers down there? You said celebrities. I'm interested to know, like, where they show up in Connecticut. Yeah, um, well, sometimes uh, I'm, like, 20 minutes from Mohegan Sun, so probably about once a month they'll get a decent uh, person to do a free signing. Like, uh, actually, just uh, tonight I did Jim Rice, who – uh, Jim Rice and Bucky Dent actually with uh, some other local graphers that I'll probably be watching and um, so yeah they basically do that every month or two they get someone good um, they had John Lester last year so uh, pretty much little events like that um, they attract quite a big uh, amount of people since there's not a ton around here but other than Mohegan Sun in the summer I do Pawtucket like at least two or three times a week to get uh, oh, wow. some some of the uh, Red Sox prospects and the uh, pr visiting prospects. When I'm in school from like September to May, I do a lot of UConn's events. Uh, they have a bunch of concerts every year. Uh, I think uh, about four if you count both semesters. Plus my uh, school, Eastern Connecticut, uh, brings in a concert every semester plus some comedians. and. Uh, occasionally I'll go out to Hartford, which is about 45 minutes to an hour, if I have enough time to. And, like, I met uh, Rudy Giuliani yeah, uh, yeah. about about two weeks ago. He was um, in, at, he was actually at Central Connecticut, which is in New Britain, but that's pretty close to Hartford. Yeah, great story. Read it, read it on your blog, and, you know, I encourage people to go Thank check you. out uh, gbautographs.com. We'll link that up. Uh, in the show notes, um, you know, love your stories. Something that sticks out to me that um, you know I love on, on the you know the blogs I read, and certainly yours. And when 
you know, people are talking about their successes, but they also talk about kind of the challenges they face yeah. and, you know, when, when they strike out. And, and I think that that's where a lot of the learning opportunities come. You know, it's one, to, one thing to have a blog to say, okay, here's what I got today. And then we can say cool and admire your collection. But um, especially with Autograph University, what I try to do is make sure someone can take something away. And, I, you know, I get that from a lot of your posts um, because you don't talk about just all the great stuff you have. You, you, know, you talk about, you know, where you run into challenges and have to overcome that. I want to go back to, you know, you're a college student. Yep. Um, and and you're, you're, a lot of your drafting opportunities come from, you know, being on campus or proximity to other campuses. I think back to, you know, now it's over 10 years. I'm <laughs> feeling old. When I, was at, when I was at UMass and thinking about, you know, the comedians that I saw, you know, Dave Chappelle and, Jim, you know, Jim Brewer and, you know, there, there were certainly, you know, graphable names that came through and, and it mm -hmm. just, you know, I wasn't as into the hobby as I, you know, as I was when I, when I moved to Boston and kind of got hooked. So talk to me about, you know, kind of tips for graphing on campus. You, and you don't even need to be a student. I think just if yeah. you're near a college and, you know, Eastern Connecticut, you know, that's not a huge college. No, Probably the, you know, the first time I heard about it was when, you know, you told me about it before we hit record. Um, but, you know, whether you're at a, you know, you're at a huge university or college, you know, there are opportunities of talking about, um, you know, kind of your approach to graphing on campus. Yeah, actually, uh, the first thing I wanted to hit on was that I actually didn't even really know about how many events there would be until I even got to college and uh, I saw like concerts being advertised and stuff. So really, uh, like uh, one thing I do is I just go on like all the local colleges. Probably uh, I haven't hit Rhode Island colleges yet, but um, I sometimes I look at uh, the different events they're having, especially Connecticut colleges. Um, just go on their events page, and usually you'll see if it's a big event, they'll have it up months ahead of time or if not at least a month ahead of time and just as for the tips go uh definitely be prepared for disorganization especially especially with security um the smaller the college the more disorganized it's going to be uh now, like, is that, no, just a pause on that is that an advantage that they're disorganized or can, are they not used to dealing with graphers and because sometimes i like I, what pops in my mind is i was thinking uh last year when i graphed bill murray yeah, um, he, he he had an appearance at, at a at a at a college in Boston, and you know there was just one girl with a clip, you know, some college girl in the, in, with a clip, you know, clipboard in the back of you know kind of like the stage door, you know, and she was basically like, "Get the hell out of here!" Very yeah. skeptical. Where if someone kind of knew what the deal was, they may you know they may you know know that you're not there to cause trouble and. You know, just keep your distance and, you, you know, just be, you know, you know, kind of a cordial person and he'll, he'll sign if he wants to. Like, what has your experience been with kind of college security? I found it to go both ways. Like, at my school, there's literally no security. So if the celebrity wants to sign, you're going to get them, like, 100% if, if they want to, obviously. But uh, as far as my experience at UConn, it's been really mixed, like, um, for one of my experiences, uh, I actually, one of the, uh, it was just a student worker. He, like, came out and asked me if he could borrow my pen when the celebrity came out. So I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I figured that would boost my chances. But yeah. then they had, like, a higher-up guy come out 10 minutes later and say to get the hell on the sidewalk, yeah. like, 30 feet away. But it, it can be really mixed. You just have to kind of play it by ear. And I found that. Uh, usually when the security is saying get away, they're going to leave before the person even comes out. So you can end up where you're supposed to be by the end of the night anyway. So talk about, you know, you've, I, you identify what events are happening on each campus. I mean, for the most part, uh, or probably a mix. Some, in my own experience at UMass, some events were student only, kind of yeah. like the spring concert or whatever. And then they'd have some other um, events like at the Fine Arts Center, they'd be open to, you know, the public too. So, you know, you, you have to do some searching, but, you know, you'd probably be creative and find out, you know, even kind of the internal events, what's going mm -hmm. on. So talk to me, once you, once you find out where something is, kind of like, what's the strategy, you know, 
does it really depend on venue? I'm just thinking of like athletic center, yeah. athletic centers where, um, you know, it may not be the most accessible place. Like if it's, you know, at the student union, there might only be one way in, one way out, but you know, it's one thing to kind of like get on campus and then you're kind of going into deeper levels of kind of like the campus environment. Yeah. So basically if, uh, after I get to the campus, if I'm not really familiar with it, like even the first time I graphed my campus, I was a little skeptical. Well, not so skeptical, but, uh, kind of, confused with what to do because our uh the event was in like the gym but there's like probably eight different ways to go sure, in yeah. from uh because the student center is connected to the gym and they can go through that which was what ended up happening i uh that experience was actually the rapper wall a um i ended up uh i couldn't try for him before the show because i was coming from work or something but after the show, I just saw, like, two huge Mercedes vans parked, like, near a door. So it kind of gave it away. But with other experiences, uh, sometimes you can get them right inside the event afterwards, especially the low-key ones. Like, all the comedians that I've gotten here are right inside. Uh, UConn's a little different, although they always come out of the same door. But it took me a little while to figure out which door because all of their events are in uh their performing arts center, not Gamble, ex with the exception of their upcoming concert. Mm -hmm. So I had to find the stage door, which wasn't extremely difficult, but when you usually I'm graphing alone around here, and uh, you second guess yourself a lot when there's no one else to kind of check with. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, just my own experience is trial and error, and sometimes I think it it takes kind of like a a trip either you know, before the event happens, just to kind of yeah. scope scope out kind of what's going on in the area, or you know, maybe that first time you don't get the autograph, but you know, you can start to eliminate entrances and exits that yeah. you know may not be uh, you know the ones that are that are most used. Um, so, as a college student, you know, I think that um, you know, I think great tips for on campus for the folks who are, you know, college students who are watching or listening to this or, you know, even if you're, you're near college, um, you know, and not a student, you know, still a lot of opportunities there. But something I think everybody can identify with is graphing on a budget. And certainly yeah. as a college student, um, you know, I know that, you know, those are challenges that, uh, that you're facing every day with, you know, books and beer and other important supplies yeah. to keep uh, to keep life running there. So talk to me about kind of like how you make decisions about where to invest and, you know, what your experience has been um, just graphing within a budget and trying to build an awesome collection. Yeah, for me, it's kind of trying to find the balance of where like distance is worth the quality and um, or my time because time's pro t it, I think time's the bigger expense than uh, the actual money that yeah, I'm putting into well said, it. Well said, well uh, said. Because if I go to Hartford, I know I have to invest like at least an hour driving each way plus the time I spend at the venue. But whereas if I stay close like UConn or my campus or even something on the weekends, it it's definitely saves me a lot of time, and which I need. <laughs> so talk to me about like, um, you know, Items you use are like, let's focus on like what you get graphed. Yeah. Um, like for me, and I, and, and I do have some regrets looking back, like I'm not, I wasn't a guy that ever carried a lot of overhead. Like it didn't yeah. have like a stack of bats in a closet or, you know, a closet full of unsigned jerseys just because like I just didn't want to carry those expenses and... I didn't graph so much that I knew, oh, I'd eventually get this guy on a jersey. So I, I tend to stick to to photos. I mean, you know, I have some, you know, basketballs and baseballs, things like that. Like, what do you like to get signed? I mean, does it just, you know, depend on the guy if you're going to go and get a, you know, a premium item? Or um, um, is it less about the item and more about just kind of like the adventure going and get somebody? See, I, it used to be kind of like I would get whatever signed like in high school I can honestly say I had a lot more money than I do now right now paying for college but um basically during like uh sports seasons I can get a lot of people to send me 50 50s which I think we'll touch on uh later yeah uh but 
a lot of times, like for baseball, I'll get cards, which are relatively inexpensive, uh, and you can get a lot signed, and I'll, you can buy a lot of them for pretty cheap on different wholesale sites like um, Just Commons, uh, mm -hmm. even eBay. You can get a good amount for a decent price. Uh, you just got to watch the shipping costs. Um, for like some of the celebrities, I do like the musicians and stuff. I'll, I, I like to get CDs, uh, especially if they're older CDs. You can get them on eBay for like three or four dollars. And um, sometimes I'll do photos depending on if I want to or not. Or if they only have like one CD out, I'll tend to like, get a few photos plus the CD. But I try not to get like baseball bats that are like 80 or 90 dollars or um, equipment like jerseys and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about 50 50s. You, just, you know, you just hit on it. Um, you know, certainly a way for, you know, you to get items for free. I mean, you have to put the effort in. For a lot of people who are who are watching and listening, maybe the first time they, you know, they've heard 50/50 or maybe they've seen it and not really sure how it works. Can you talk to us about like what what a 50/50 is and, and what the process is like? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's really like the best of both worlds. You uh basically uh a scenario would be if you're going to say a baseball game, a guy could send a guy or person for that matter could send you uh like five, or well, six would be a better example. They could send you six cards of player X. You would get uh, half of that amount of cards signed uh, for that person, send them back, then you would get to keep the other three for yourself, which you'll never have to pay for. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're putting in the money for gas to get to the stadium and possibly a ticket, but uh, you don't have to pay for your items, so it really makes up for a lot of expenses. Yeah, so, I mean, talk to me, because, you know, you, you do a lot of 50, 50s, um, it sounds like it it makes sense when you know pardon the pun but it's a 50 50 split between how yeah. many times you're doing the signing and how many times you know someone else is helping you out because you know it sounds like a pretty good deal like if yeah. all I have to do Garrett is to go on just Commons and get six cards and send you six and you're gonna get three graph for me I don't have to do any legwork you know that's a, you know that's a pretty generous offer for you to you know you do. I mean, I know you're there, but still, you know, you have to worry about, you know, just the responsibility to carry someone else's stuff. Yeah. Um, so, t I mean, have you, you know, what has your experience been working with other collectors? Uh, it's been really well for the most part. I mean, I'm not taking 50-50s for, like, really, really high-scale players, but, uh, because what I wanted to hit on was one of the problems you can run into is getting an odd number of the items signed. So... You want to really do it for players you know are going to sign and sign all your items, or at least if it's baseball season, a lot of people, like, some people will send me, like, 100 or 200 cards, and you have, like, from uh, April to, like, late August to get them done. And if even if you get, like, say, 90% of their stuff done, they're going to be happy, and then you have a, a good amount of items that you wouldn't have had in the first place sure. or, th or that you would have had to pay for in the first place. Sure. So tell me about like just going back to you know college student you're you know you're working you're paying for college yourself talk to me about like how you're balancing all this like I know myself like you know I sound like a broken record for the folks that you know read autograph university and master class but they know that you know I've had some challenges just with you know time and you know we had a baby nine months ago so you know having to prioritize other things in your life over a very time-consuming hobby like autograph collecting. So how do you how do you balance all of those things? I thought going into college it would be more of a problem than it actually is. Like uh, my mom's always bugging me about like she's <laughs> having enough time to study and she's like, oh, you're making your hobby more important. But I'm really not. I get fine grades and stuff. And uh, my social life is fine. Actually, like my girlfriend loves to go to book signings and stuff. So That's whenever fun. I... Whenever I do the book signings, that's fine. She's not too fond of the basketball, baseball stuff. But uh, other than that, like, my social life is really good. Um, I do most of the stuff, like, when, I'm, when I wouldn't be doing anything else anyway. Mm -hmm. Or a lot on weekends, like, after work or something where I would just go home and sleep anyway. Sure. But, yeah, it's really been fine uh, for the most part. Excellent. So, I mean, you're, you're still a young guy, but... I yeah, I want you to talk about kind of, you know, what have you learned over the past, 
you know, several years that when you started, you wish you knew, like, what are some of the, you know, mistakes you made early, early on that you, you know, you know, would tell a new grapher, you know, avoid these mistakes or, you know, if you go back and do, do something again. Just like, um, basically like you can, uh, still graph on a budget, but don't get cheap items signed. Like I know you've written about it before. Don't get the cheap baseballs, so the $3 ones signed because yeah, they'll, no. they'll disappear. Uh, I didn't do so much of that uh, when I was younger, but I would get, like, Sharpies on, like, random baseballs and stuff. And, like, I, I remember one of the autographs I got probably when I was, like, five when he was in double A. I was looking through my, like, uh, boxes of baseballs from when I was really young. I found, like, a David Eckstein one uh, just in Sharpie. And it was, like, <laughs> it looked like it was used for, like, a year of batting practice. Yeah. So I'm like. I'm like, oh, I probably didn't even know who he was when I was, like, six years old or seven years old. But I guess it's still kind of cool that I have it now. And yeah. looking back, it's kind of funny when yeah. I look back on it. I definitely have, like, that box of kind of random graphs on yeah. crappy items that, like, I don't want to throw away. But, like, I would never display anywhere. And they just yeah. kind of are like the – it's kind of like the box of broken toys over here that I don't really know what to do with. Yeah. Um, so just like the last thing to wrap up, um, got, got a request from a reader and they said, um, Matt, love, the, love the, the master class. We want to hear the success stories. Like we want to hear, you know, kind of that, you know, that case study of, of going out and finding the information, walk us through kind of the success. Is there a story that stands out to you where you can kind of take us through you know, maybe it was an especially dif dif difficult graph or just someone that meant something to you. Um, can you kind of take us through kind of start to finish, you know, how you acquired the, the autograph? Yeah, definitely. Um, the one I wanted to talk about was uh, Donald Glover, uh, also known as Childish Gambino. He's yeah. an actor on the NBC comedy yeah. community. Big fan. It, yeah, and uh, he also has had, I think, two uh, comedy specials on um, Comedy Central, and he also released a full-length uh, hip rap hip-hop album. Yeah. He's actually he's a very good uh, uh, celebrity to get because he's like a triple threat. Sure. Um, so basically, this event was at UConn, um, which ties into the whole college thing. I only had to drive 10 minutes for it, and uh, it turned out to be one of my best successes ever. Um, basically I went there, I was going to go to the concert anyway with a bunch of my friends, just a, a night out and I tried and I got there really early. I went after my last class of the day finished and I got right up there. I was going to try to graph them before the show should I, so I could just enjoy the show and not have to, I mean, not worry about it, but not think about it during the show. Like, oh, am so, I going to get them? So not, not interrupt, but just to pause there, like, like what time will you know, did the show start and like when would you get there? That's the question I get a lot yeah. is like how early do I have to be there? I mean, of course it differs with uh, all sure. celebrities, but uh, I got, I believe the show was scheduled to start at 7 and I, I probably got there right about 4 okay. and I waited right where I knew he was going to come in and it, it, was, uh, I, it was when I figured out where the stage door was. Uh, after like two and a half hours. I waited until like 6.30. He still wasn't there. And then uh, after the fact, before I talk about how I actually ended up getting him, I found out he was there like hours before doing stuff with students and stuff. Yeah. So I obviously wasted all of that yeah. time, which, it, I mean, it wasn't a huge deal, but it was, it was just, it was really cold. It was in October, I think. So New England weather. And sure. Sure. Then, so the show goes on. I left the show about five minutes early just to get a spot and to kind of scope out if his cars were there and stuff. You know, his cars were there, and I started waiting. I was the only one. Um, then uh, a kid came out. He was a student worker, and he just kind of started asking me what I was doing there. And then when I told him I just wanted to try for an autograph, uh, he was like, oh, can I borrow your pen when he comes out? I'm like, oh, wow, well, yeah, I'll definitely help my chances if the security kid's uh, yeah, totally. uh, wanting to borrow my pen. Yeah. So then uh, he goes back inside, and then maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, one of the actual security guards, uh, not a UConn employee, but one of the rented out um, subcontracted guys came out, and he was just kind of acting like, they were guarding Fort Knox or something. That's, <laughs> the I, president that, is coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, 
So he tells me I have to go on the sidewalk, which is about 30 feet away or something from his car. So I'm like, uh, if he doesn't, at least if I was standing right outside the door and he wanted to do it, then it would be so easy. But he might not want to walk over 30 sure. feet or whatever because he's a celebrity. <laughs> and um, so basically I stood on the sidewalk or whatever. And by that point, there was one other regular grapher that I graph with who I'm pretty friendly with. So that it, I was waiting with him, which was kind of good and bad in some ways because at first I was the only one and then there's someone else so I'm like oh maybe he won't want to do multiples but it um then like after the show actually ended before he came out well this was this all this occurrence with the security and stuff was after the show anyway but uh it was probably like right when it was ending then after it was really letting out a bunch of like drunk college students uh started coming over and they were really loud and they were standing right near me and my buddy and I really thought it wasn't going to happen. I mean, I mean, they're just being college kids like me, but the, they were being really loud. I thought they were going to ruin the chances. Sure. But basically, to end the story, uh, Glover came out, I guess, maybe 10 minutes after all, the, all of them showed up. And I yelled his name once. He didn't even look up. I said it again, and I guess maybe he didn't hear me or he was just doing something. And he ended up coming over. Uh, he had his own Sharpie at first, which was completely dried out and he wouldn't switch but so i got him on my cd don't you always wonder if if they like intention like yeah. if the manager just spends the afternoon just Definitely. drying it out or yeah if they probably just, yeah. but so after he it seems like it's always the way. after he saw how bad my cd cover came out he switched uh to my blue which was oh, awesome good. Uh, and I just told him to keep it and run with it because, uh, and I dipped him like four or five times. Uh, so I ended up getting, I think maybe f between four and six so autographs. So was the whole, was the whole crowd of college students like getting tickets to that? Like, was uh, it no, a bigger crowd at that time? See, like another experience I had, usually when there's a crowd of college kids, they have nothing to get signed. Yeah. They, they just want like pictures with them okay. or whatever. I think, um... Because it's tough to dip when there's only two people. He took pictures with, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, he took pictures with a few of them, but he, it was funny because this is how I actually dipped him. I don't know if it's actually considered dipping him because of how this happened, but he's like, oh, yeah, I'll, only si I'll sign. I mean, I'll take a picture with you guys, but only if I'm signing something. So I, like, hand him something to sign, and he would take a picture with someone. I thought that was kind of strange. Yeah, I, so I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like his picture just taken or something, but yeah. – Either way, I got more autographs out of it, and it made it w pretty much worth it. And I was surprised; it became my most viewed blog post ever. Um, I guess probably because my viewership is probably mostly like college kids slash, um, I mean, other graphers uh, like from the other communities. But yeah, it became my most successful post ever, and I, I awesome. believe it still is uh, today. Great. Well, we'll definitely pull that out and link that one up uh, as well. So we talked about the blog. Um, tell people how they can how they can follow you, get in touch with you. Yeah, definitely. Um, my website, uh, just gbautographs.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at gbautographs, um, and also on Facebook. Uh, it's just facebook.com slash gbautographs. So it's all related to the site. I use the Twitter account as kind of a personal and for the blog, which is – it works out pretty well. Um, so yeah, those are the easiest ways you can follow me. You can also, I believe, you can send me emails right from my blog. Uh, I usually don't. I usually just, uh, if someone has a question, they leave a comment and I'll get back to them. But yeah, definitely follow me on Twitter and check out the site. That was Garrett Berth. You dropping the knowledge. He's a gentleman, a scholar, and a grapher. We learned a lot. Thank you so much, Garrett, for coming on the master class. I encourage you to check out his blog. He does a great job tracking his adventures over at gbautographs.com. Definitely check that out, and you can get in touch with him on Twitter at gbautographs. Then head on over to Autograph University. Check out the articles, guides, tips, all the good stuff we have over there at autographu.com. Sign up for our newsletter at autographu.com slash newsletter. Never miss an episode of the master class, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, give me a shout, matt at autographu.com, or head on over to Twitter and uh, get in touch with me at Matt Raymond. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions. Love getting emails from you guys. Um, thanks again for watching the master class. Until next time, be well and let the ink flow.